Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. Third day. Nineteen seconds to go. Give me a ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Welcome to Loveline. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Well, I don't approve of it. Loveline. The world's therapy couch since 1984. Loveline. Dr. Drew Pinsky, medical doctor, philosopher, philanthropist, certified addiction specialist, the king of transformational media. Loveline. Mike. Mike Catherwood, a former addict, current fitness guru, the ringmaster of a psychosexual addictive personality, Big Top. Loveline. 1 800 Love 191. Yes, yes, yes. Get on with it. Bitch. Anderson's not ready tonight. It's okay. There it is. You live. Oh, he's so ready. You live. Yes. Anderson looks slimmer since tr since camp. <laughs> I was being serious, dude. You could totally tell when I'm being sarcastic. I was being dead serious. I'm never in a place where I need to be slimmer. I'm always perfect. That's true. I uh, but yeah. What was I thinking? Uh, Pablo Francisco gonna join us tonight. Right on. Um, it's been it's been far too long since he joined us. He had very it's very been a couple of years, right? Very talented guy, and uh, he uh, last time I was here, or excuse me, last time he was here, I feel bad because I kind of outshined his tremendous performance by oh. having an orgasm on the air. Right, you were trying trying special a new Trojan product when right. we used to have a, a big good uh, advertiser sponsor. and sponsor, right. uh, and I destroyed that sponsor by using one of their products on the air and ejaculating. Well, thank you. We, yeah. we needed to lose our sponsors. Well done. Offended them, they ran away. I did Bruce Buffer's uh, podcast yeah. today yeah. for uh, Sure Dog um, Radio Network, which is really like the the most uh, highly respected source of MMA news, all combat sport news. And he has a show there, and he's the announcer, the ringman for the UFC, the official ringman for the So we go in we talk I mean, but we also talked culture and light and and we got into discussing how his one of his closest friends is a gynecologist mm. and he you again you can't believe that well we oh, no. <laughs> we didn't get on the topic by discussing hot vagina yeah we got on the topic by discussing doctors by okay. discussing physicians and okay. like the different we actually were talking about the guy who had, they had to pay out at johns hopkins oh right they had to pay out the 190 million because yes. he was videotaping right people. one of the putting a gopro in the and we, we were talking about how people who have exceptional jobs that deserve the extra responsibility it's it's sad when they pervert that responsibility. Oh, you know what you I'm know saying? You know how I am about that. Yeah, cops, doctors, um, I go whatever. Ins I, go insane, I go insane, particularly about doctors and teachers. Mm -hmm. I, I go out of my mind. So I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, so th we were just having that discussion. We said it, it, it is sad because a guy like this can make so many doctors, you know, who really are like the top of the food chain, look poorly. So we yep. were talking, and then I got into this conversation about being a gynecologist. I was like, really not. Not a great gig, but every once it's in a while. It's an interesting part of medicine. It really is. Well, and an important one. I mean, you're oh dealing with the main reproductive organ. Uh, and stuff. It, there's a lot of just interesting stuff that happens, yeah. But there's a lot of bad. I mean, it's yeah. you're dealing, look it. If a woman, not a girl, not just getting a pap smear, but if a woman makes a choice to go to the gynecologist, that means something's up in her vagina. Yeah. That means UTI, yeasty, yeah. Yeah. wonder e bread. Easy, easy. And that's, compared to what kind of S we have to deal with in medicine, general that's medicine, true. that's, 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 a piece of cake. But we all got, we all came to the conclusion. And by the that, way, we see that stuff too in general medicine. But go ahead. Go, but we conclusion all, so was. The, so we came to the conclusion that I was right and you're wrong and you're full of S and you're just lying because of the Hippocratic Oath that, of course, gynecologists are professional. Without quite, I'm not saying that a, an attractive woman's vagina skews the way they practice their medicine. I'm saying that internally. They make note of it. You're like, this is pretty sweet. They make note. I have to deal with 47 women over 80 with, with cobwebs and yeast. And here's Kate Upton. This is a good deal. I'm going to enjoy this part of my job. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Uh, I did uh, Phil Henry. I don't – this is – this is this is a whole podcast in and of itself. That you, you, you and did I a, talking about that? You did a podcast with one of my true idols. Oh, and One my of the guys God. who's inspired me to be in entertainment from the beginning. You've got to go do it then. If he knew that, he'll, he'll definitely put you in there. Yeah, I would love to. I went to watch. Yeah, yeah, but also stop, please. 
Stop it with Dr. Drew Prism eyes. No, no, I, I think you get in there. I, I, I think we can work that out, but he's, he's so great. He's from Arcadia. I knew that. I did, I did know, know that. that. You know how I knew when he used to be on KBC, I believe, uh, this is um, maybe 10 years ago, um, radio friends of mine took me to go watch him do his radio show. Oh. And I was, I, I mean, it blew me away. I was yeah. sweating. I was so impressed. But, well, um, so I talked to Bobby, uh, what's Bobby's last name? Dooley. Bobby Dooley. I talked to Bobby Dooley well, for he did about the, an hour and a half. He does a lot of the podcast. Uh, like he, he, mm-hmm. he, he that's uh-huh. right. Uh huh. Mm hmm. We got to change topics real quick. Okay, I mean, I'm sorry. This yeah. is not good love line stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pablo Francisco is going to join us. Have you had sex with a celebrity? Our open forum. Oh. And the reason I chose that, and I, I want to know, your, is that there's a good chance that um, we can have said celebrity sitting right in front of us, being with how talented an impersonator Mr. Francisco is. Oh. So if someone calls up, it could be practical. I mean, oh. I just think it'd be this funny. Another, I had another good idea, too. Okay. I saw Sammy Phillips uh, put this on Facebook. How about the craziest thing somebody said to you during an intimate encounter? Like the most craziest. Like That's pretty good. <sighs> yeah, it is good. That is good, especially with our audience. Uh-huh. I just can't, mm-hmm. I can't think of a better line than in Fight Club. Uh, what is what does she say? Helena Bonham Carter says to Brad Pitt, yeah, when he's banging her, she's like, "I haven't been f like that since grade school," <laughs> and he like he like st- he looks over, he's like, "Oh, <laughs> something like that." It's got to you know. Anderson, more than Bobby though, the husband was the guy I enjoyed talking to. Wasn't he usually in the background though? Yeah, a little bit, but I I got him engaged pretty good. Hello, Chris. Oh, where can I hear that? Uh, it's going up soon. I'll let you know. Go to two girls one cup dot com or That's goat, not it. You go to goatsee dot com. SpecialFriedRice.net. What's going Hello, Chris. God. Hey, I uh, love the show, guys. Uh, first, I want to say, uh, yeah, I listen to every show. Mike, I mean, I think you're one of the best broadcasters out there, man. I Thank you, sir. You. This is clearly right. a man uh, of discerning mm-hmm. taste. Thank you so much, Chris. Yes, and Dr. Drew, the splitter, Pinsky, I want to say, man, you're doing the Lord's work. Uh, you know, keep it up. Thank and, you. Uh, you. definitely should run for president one day. Ooh, I agree. But uh, I would vote for you, man. But, uh, yeah, my question is, um, yeah, I, uh, I was a the heroin addict, and actually you guys uh, definitely helped me uh, get clean. And I'm uh, seven months sober. Nice, cool, man. Well done. And, uh, yeah, I'm taking some boxer right now, and I'm taking, like, I mean, I'm taking a fairly tiny bit. I'm taking, like, quarter to half a milligram of boxer in a day. But I have, I have half really bad a milligram. Not, half a milligram or half of a... Like an eight or four milligram tablet. No, it's yeah, it's like a tiny piece. It's like literally a quarter to that, a half that, milligram. That damn medication is so treacherous, and I know no. you feel like hell when you stop it altogether, right? No, yeah, and it's insane because I have back problems, and like even that tiny, tiny bit like gets me through the day, and like you, 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 you know, don't you don't, don't have back problems. You don't have back problems. You have opiate withdrawal. So when okay. you so when you well, stop the medicine, the opiate withdrawal kicks in, and the primary feature of opiate withdrawal is back pain. I mean, well, yeah, I know, I know it get or get better, but I no, I no, listen, wait a minute, Chris, to... stop it, Chris. There is no way that a quarter milligram of Suboxone has any anti-pain properties at all. It just doesn't. Yeah, I guess you're right. It doesn't. But it does yeah. prevent withdrawal. So when you stop it all together, boom, on comes the withdrawal. Right. And so it takes about two weeks for that uh, withdrawal to go away. And it's pretty miserable. Right. It's pretty miserable. And it gets yeah. worse, no, too. It, huh? it, it's for sure. No, I was going to ask, I mean, should I, like, is it okay for me to take it until I get, like, because I work two jobs, should I, you know, can I take that? Um and then wait for my vacation. Yes, you're on such of, a. It's if you truly are on a half a milligram, which is such a tiny amount, uh, oh, then then yeah, why not wait? Yeah, stay in the program, work hard on your stuff, and and uh, wait till the time comes that you have the moment that you know the time to be able to okay. go through the withdrawal. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Because I didn't know if you know if, uh, if I'm taking it too long or you know. Most people never get off it. That's what concerns me about it. So you're on your way to getting okay. off. You're 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 well. You're very close. Okay. Yeah, no, and I want to get. I want to get to that point. You know, I don't need any substance in my That's life. That's so. right. You're doing. You're, uh, you're, you're on. You're in the. You're. It's clear to me you're going in the right direction. And if you guys got time for a real quick question, um, uh, I go to NA at like 
Um, I mean, I, I smoke weed too. Like, no, you got to stop, like, dude. You got to stop. Everything. All this is making a lot more sense. So why he opened up with uh, Mike's being the greatest broadcaster How in the world dare and you? worshiping the you. Up. How dare up. you? But you yeah. you said it. You don't want to take any substances. You got to stop substances because they all will yeah. be escalate. They oh, you have a disease. It will progress. Yeah. I mean, I feel like quitting weed is like harder than quitting heroin. For some people, it is. Like, it can be really well, tough. Well, it's incredibly hard for people who come from a background of using opiates. Right. People, and particularly, right. well, not everyone who uses opiates loves weed. It's crazy. But no, if but you do, if you are, yeah. if you do get a lot out of THC, yeah, yeah. you like that drug and that feeling, you and you it, came yeah. from a background of smoking. That's impossible. That's the worst because I always meet people like that. Yeah. We're like, at least I'm not using heroin. I go, but you're. You're yeah. really yeah. playing with it's Russian roulette every yep. day. You take a bong yep. load. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I'm not one of those wake and bake guys, though. I mean, I wait till like the end of the day. You know, to, you know. Well, you're making you're rest. making excuses. Yeah. You're, you're, I know. you're Come on now, stop it. And, and listen, know, know, don't don't misconstrue this if you're tuning in and then it's like hey, Mike and Drew, the devil man. They say no we no. You want to take a bong load after a long day at work? That's your business, and I think that's great. Right. I don't not, want not I don't want Chris, who's a former Chris. heroin addict, taking a bong load. Life threatening yes. illness. That will be right. re-triggered by this. No. All right, dude. Good no, luck. No. Stay strong. Hello, Danny. What's up, man, you freaking psycho? Hey, how are you? Uh, you know, I uh, just feel a little crappy today. But, What's going uh, on? What's happening? Uh, well, yesterday I recently found out that uh, my ex-girlfriend for about two months, I, I was with her for about two years, but uh, we've been exes for about two months, uh, that she's dating someone new, and... Uh, happens to be somebody that I met about two months ago outside of my group of friends that um, it was kind of like a outside scapegoat, you know? No, I don't understand what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're saying. Not one word. Okay, Um, so about two months ago when we broke up, I found a new group of friends, and uh, I found out that uh, she's dating one of those guys in that group of friends yesterday. Okay. Um. Honestly, I I guess you could call me jealous, but uh, I just kind of want to know how to get out of it. Like, how do I feel better? And, you know what I mean? No, it sucks, dude, especially when you're a young guy. There's nothing worse than finding out that your ex is dating someone new. That's That really does suck. Um, yeah. I, I think the only words of solace I could give you are that I understand that it sucks, and you're, you're, you're normal, you know? I, Drew, I mean, if, I mean, I'm being serious. Like... It just does. It just sucks to know that, like, the girl you broke up with, even though you're exes, like, it sucks when you find out they date someone new. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, I, I do know why we did break up in the first why? place. Like, why? Like, we, uh, I guess I just treated her really badly. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm 24. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm young. and Okay, I, well, I kinda, learn, learn from this one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right, dude. Do not oh, do, also, not do I her. I got another question for you guys. Yes. Yeah. You guys are in Culver City, right? right? Yes. Where do you guys eat in Culver City? Where do we eat in Culver City? I've eaten at yes, Ru- you- Rush and... Uh... Good restaurant. Father's Office, public school. Uh... Okay. Have you guys ever heard of this place called For Show? For Show? For Show. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if it's spelled differently than you're, than I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, it's P-H-O-S-H-O-W. Oh, oh is that I've the new that. Vietnamese yeah. place right yeah. there on Venice? Yeah. Or on, uh, on what are we doing? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I believe it's where our office, our this used to be. Where Westwood One used to be. No, he's talking about something down in Sepulveda. No, okay. Life Life Kitchen is where we used to. Oh be, right, where right. the president's that place, been. And... That place is dank though. That, that Life Kitchen. Is it good? Yeah. You eat living things. You do. You actually, they bring you over just like a like big fish that are flopping around, or like a chicken, and it's like just gnaw on it. So it's Asian inspired. Yeah. It is. 1-800-L-O-V-E-1... I didn't say dog. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the number. What? Anderson, how dare you? Give us a call here if you have a question or a concern. Later tonight, we want to know the craziest thing someone's told you during sex. That's a great open forum brought to us by Dr. Drew. You do it? Yeah, hell yeah. Friend Sam Phillips came up with that one. I thought it was great. We're going to do it later, Anderson. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. A very talented young man, Pablo Francisco, joins us next on Love Life. service you'll have to find a new boyfriend love lines coming back
1-800-LOVE-191 is the number, my friends. My friends, this Thursday, August 7th, Friday the 8th, Saturday the 9th, Sunday the 10th. You ask, why am I naming these dates? Because that is when Pablo Francisco, our guest, is going to be at the Brea Improv. Come here on in down. Southern California. If you're listening here in Southern California, make your way to Orange County this weekend. See one of the most talented uh, men on the planet. Thanks, man. And uh, his amazing performances. And also, you, if you are listening around the country, just go to pablofrancisco.com. And there's a link right there to all his tour dates, which are quite extensive. You are a man who lives from day to day yes, out I'm, of a suitcase. I'm on the road. Yes, with all states stand, I'm always on the road. That's right. <laughs> with Decepticons and Transformers, you usually become a liability with all states stand. That's right. Sometimes you get a DUI and they just run away. Yes, Sir, I'm on the road like crazy. Do you ever consider, because we were talking a little bit about like forensic shows. Forensic yeah. finals. Um, you're f- familiar with Luminol and all these things. Right. Do you ever know, think to yourself, hey, I'm in a different hotel every night. How much spunk and <laughs> and poopy and fluids am I sleeping in? Yeah, you know, sometimes I think about that. I go, you know, was there two old men and a 69 in here? And then yeah. I check in. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of creepy. Sometimes I... Uh, when I get to, uh, usually they put me in like five star hotels, so it's pretty nice. Yeah. So it's, they look, it looks clean. But I think that I always think that to myself. My wife's a a tremendous uh, hotel snob. Like she really is. Like w- let's not even go on vacation unless we can afford to really do it right. right. And I, and I and I was always like, hey, I'll stay anywhere. I don't mind as long as it's got a, a cable TV and a bed. Right. But she brings up the point that well, you you can kind of count on a little bit more cleanliness. But then I was thinking to myself, no. Because people with, like, a lot of dispensable income are the sickest Fs on the planet. Yeah. And they're the ones who are going to, you know, come here from Germany to go to the Four Seasons and crap on themselves. And, <laughs> and like, some Japanese go baller through. that goes to Vegas and has an you eel in his wife's pussy. way too much of that crazy <laughs> Shiza stuff. Tell me. Tell, Dr. Drew? Yeah. Okay. Chances are, you are a guy who really understands human behavior. Yeah. If you had I to don't put, understand that. I, but, I, cannot, I, 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 but, I can't get my head around But it. if you had to put money on someone doing sick sexual macabre and depraved <laughs> stuff is it going to be the the head of uh of of lehman brothers who has just crazy money and gets bored easily or is it going to be like the couple from you know, you know like what? the valley one thing i learned working in a psychiatric hospital for years and years and years i've never said this is that there's way more in common with the very high very wealthy and the very poor they, they're very much alike behaviorally and in terms of their psychiatric liabilities and stuff and so both ends is where you'll find it, right. if you will, Mike, so to speak. Okay. Well, so, you know, the thing is they got issues, okay? And what they need to do is go in the bathroom and solve their issues with tissues. That's what they need to do, okay? You, you, you speak the truth, sir. I've often said on this show that if guys beat off more, Ouch. you'd save yourself a lot. No, seriously. Like, you make really impulsive bad decisions when you're too loaded. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is that when you do it too much and you're loaded, it sounds like sneakers on a basketball court. Yeah. <laughs> Goop. But, uh, yeah, you know, the thing is I carry a a uh, <laughs> disinfectant called uh, Proceed, right? And I spray that what? stuff. It's called Proceed or Proside, <laughs> I think, all right? And you spray it, and it kills all the germs, like, in 30 seconds. So that's my confidence when I go into a hotel room. All right. Just to answer the question. Is that safe, Drew? I don't know what it is. What's in it? Proside, it's like you, you have to add, like, this other chemical to it, <laughs> and then it just boils up. <laughs> Probably it's like Walter White. <laughs> yeah, this Hey, Mr. Peabody, that kind of thing. So that's uh, I carry that. I get it on Amazon, so it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I'll look at, it up. At Pablo underscore Francisco on that there Twitter. Hello, uh, Don. Oh, hey, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call. All right. No problem, man. Um, hey, I'm such a big fan. I've listened to every show since 2011, and um, what you guys do is you help so many people. You've encouraged me to lose a ton of weight and get some therapy for my head and get off of marijuana, which is why I'm calling. Right. That's awesome, right. dude. Congratulations. That's cool. really fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Just listening to you guys give out, out all that good advice kind of gave me a gut check. Um, so I'm a, I'm a pretty massive cannabis user. I have a, an undiagnosed lung condition where I, I just I can't smoke because it makes me sick. It makes me cough really bad, and I can't breathe. So I did edibles um, to the point where I was consuming, like, maybe four or five tablespoons of, like, concentrated oil a day. So up in the 750 to 1,000 milligram a day range. Um, so I'm coming off of it. Yeah, dude. Um, and, of course, it was, you know, anyways – like major, major uh, hiding from the world issues. But um, so I'm, I'm backing off of that right now. I'm about 10, 11 days cold turkey. And uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was, but I'm also on, uh, on Lexapro right now. And so my question was, was for Dr. Drew. Mm. And it was, um, what is there a relationship between, you know, the, that 
what the marijuana does to your brain and what the SSRI is doing to my brain. What can I expect? What can I expect? I know it's a long withdrawal. I know it's like six months. You mean, is, um, is the withdrawal going to be improved or ameliorated by the SSRI? Is that the question? No, my question is, am I, am I doing more damage to my brain by having that chemical in my body with, with the serotonin no. difference? No, okay. no, no. I mean, listen, if, if, ser- if serotonin reptic or inhibitors were actually damaging to your brain, you'd have a nice big lawsuit on your hands. You can go to the, sue a drug company. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 asked, I asked my question poorly. I guess my question was, while I was on the, uh, on the Lexapro, did taking all that, like that prolonged cannabis use, No. what are the long-term effects? Well, the cannabis itself, if you start in, after your teen years, there is change in your brain, actually brain anatomy changes, but it goes back to normal. It's people okay. that, it's people that start in the early adolescence that the changes become permanent. No, I hit it like right right towards the end of puberty. I've been a pretty regular user for about 15 years. This is the longest I've gone without it. So you started at 15. Like, so you started as a teenager. That's what I said. That's when it becomes oh, a problem. Okay. So, yeah, you, you may have some permanent effects on memory and mood, but but probably not. Probably not. Okay. Okay. Hey, thanks again. I just want to let you guys know that anytime someone says basically around me, a bell goes off in my head. So Ding. Thanks, I guess. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Uh, hey, have a great day, guys. Bye. You bet. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Pablo Francisco is our guest. Hello, Tony. Hey, how's it going, guys? Tony, Tony, Dude, Tony. relax. Tony Montano, okay? Good, good. First off, no, Tony, I'm relax, you guys. Man. Thank you for taking my call. It's our pleasure. Good, good. Okay, so my question is that um, I, have, I have a girlfriend. I've been with her for about three and a half years, and... Um, she just has a real low sex drive, like, all of a sudden, like, this past year. And I'm just trying to, like, wonder, like, what I can do to boost up her sex drive. Or, like, is it me that I, like, I'm making her sex drive, like, go down? No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. How long you been with her? For about three and a half years. And you're 20? Yes. And how old is she? She's 21. And you said she had, like, a sex drive before? Yeah, well, like, when we first got together, like, we were doing it at least, like, you know, like three, four times, three, four times a week. Okay, that's and, pretty healthy. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, and then just out of like this past year has just been like rocky roads. You know, like once, like every week and a half, maybe. I gotta like, say, I, dude. I mean, when uh, do they live together? Or? Yeah, do you live together? That's a good question. No, no, we do not live together. No. My 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 go to advice for you at your age is going to be so different than it would be for like a grown up couple. You know, if you were living together and in your 30s and married or something, and all of a sudden your sex, her sex drive went down, I'd be like, man, yeah, you know, make her some dinner, what, you know, get pour look a glass of it. wine and massage her. Well, look into the biology. Right, too. or talk to her. Maybe she, it's a birth control pill. If you've been dating for three years and she's 20, chances are she's just internally come to the point where this relationship's over. Okay. You know, and I, I mean, I, I, I do not say that to make you feel bad. I just, it's realistic. I, I mean, you, yeah, you guys have been together such a huge chunk of your own lives. Yeah, because I tell her, too, and she just says, oh, well, I'm not into it like that, that as much as you're into it. And I'm just no, like, no. Oh, okay. Like, I'm no, 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 no. So I'm, I'm getting to that, like, oh, it's probably just me. Like, maybe, like, something's wrong with me. No, there may be I, something like, wrong with the relationship. The relation? No, I mean, we've been on and off about, like, once or twice, maybe, but it was just, like, a little break. Yeah, I understand, but when you you start when you're 16, 17, it sort of eventually winds down. Okay, I see. And maybe that winding, maybe that this is part of that winding down process. Okay, so what do you guys suggest I should do? Uh-huh. Well, is she hot? Yeah, she's hot. Yeah, she's beautiful. I mean, like, when you say like you get fun. once a week, now, how yeah, many like, of those times is anal? Oh, jeez. None. Okay. At all. Whew, I, <laughs> can home. we can we kick her out of the country? <laughs> yeah, it's like she doesn't like any of that. Like I, I suggested her once. I told her, and she's like, "Oh no, it's like nothing's going on." Yeah, play Listen, roles. I was kidding, Tony. Don't try to oh. impose anal on a twenty-year-old girl who is not even ready for regular sex. Just play oh, roles yeah, no, or no, something. No, yeah. You know, be okay. role-playing. Like, you know, are you, listen, you be the maid, I be Arnold, I go down there to get a quesadilla, something <laughs> happens here, I chop the onions, you know, and we get it going, and we keep it secret, you and me. Yeah. Something like that, you know. <laughs> Do you ever feel, like, listen, Tony, talk to her, talk to her. Do you ever feel, like, more empowered when you're portraying 
like powerful people? Uh, you know what? I never really thought about that. Usually, like you know, I do like uh, like Mark Wahlberg. I don't feel powerful when I do. Right, right, right. Hey, man, what's the deal? Come on, you open up a hot dog. Come on, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> I would say when I do like a black guy's voice. What's up, man? You got a problem? Hell yeah. Sometimes I feel like you know that's that's a power move right there. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's how like, you like pump yourself up. Because I, I was here, I yeah. was uh, doing a parody song once of uh, playing it live. And I was doing it as Gene Simmons, and I put like on the Gene Simmons makeup and like the whole out in the, like the platform boots. Right. And I actually, I mean, this is no joking, no kidding aside. I was like, I kind of feel cooler. Like I feel like, I mean, not to say that Gene Simmons is like the epitome of cool, right. but having that like powerful persona, it did yeah. make me feel like I could just go like talk down to women and like all encourage right, women to. All the wrong the right words come out. I can't have Gene Gene Simmons. Don't do drugs, even though I'm a demon and I spit blood. And uh, <laughs> wear makeup, but uh, that's my Gene Simmons. We owe you. Simmons. We owe you like eighty dollars for that impersonation. Uh, You're uh, the real Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one is the number. PabloFrancisco dot com, the official website. He'll be at the Brea Improv Thursday through Sunday here in Southern California. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one is the number. This is Love Line. This program is brought to you in part by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. On August eighth, a new breed of hero arrives. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in theaters everywhere, August 8th, rated PG-13. Don't worry, don't worry. Loveline will return right after these words of wisdom. You mean, uh, more advertising? Yes.
1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Pablo Francisco in the house tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Jack. What's happening? PabloFrancisco.com. Remember, he'll be at the Brea Improv this week, Thursday through Sunday. Hello, David. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing tonight? We're good, man. How are you? Good, good. I, I have a problem. Thanks for taking my call, by the way. But it's a good problem that I have, I guess. Okay. Now, I have a girlfriend. We're both young adults. The only thing is that she has a very, very high sex drive. <clears throat> You're 18. How old is she? Uh, she's 18 as well. How high? What do we talk? What's the difference between your guys' rhythms? She's talking about going, not, I mean, multiple times, but I mean, I'm talking about like seven to, to ten times in a day. Oh, okay. So that's she has a disorder, right? Is that's, that what that is? Yeah, and that's 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 never ending. That's every day she's that way. <laughs> every day she's that every way. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So and th- we've that experimented and. We've tried the different things. No, We've no, no. Listen, no, 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 no. That that's a, that's not going to stop. So either she's, I mean, the common things that do that are some bipolar manic. People who have bipolar disorder will get that way sometimes, and sometimes people with who have sex, women with sexual trauma can get sex addiction and behave like that. Did she have anything growing up? Uh, she hasn't told me anything about that, so I mean, I'm pretty sure she hasn't. The one thing I do know is that she does have divorced parents. Well, no, no, no. I mean, like she was sexually abused growing up. No, nothing, nothing like that. I know you say like she hasn't told me about that, and I don't know. I mean, but an 18 year old girl probably wouldn't open up about that. I mean, not, I mean, my kid, something like that happened to him. We didn't. I, I, I didn't I, even I, tell my male friends. But no. I had to, I had to squeeze it out of you. Well, yeah, and it wasn't even like. It, you you needed to. It was just that I didn't, didn't even dawn it. on me yeah. that it was like a sexual abuse. Um, yeah, no, I I had sex really young, and I thought like I really wanted to, and I, I thought it would make me the coolest guy ever. And then when it happened, it was so traumatic that I didn't even tell like my male buddies. Because it was an, an 18, 19 year old girl. He was twelve. Yeah, really. I was yeah. th- I was thirteen yeah. to be fair. So it sounded like that. Yeah, come on. Yeah. She had she had a mustache. Come on, man. but. It was not good. She had a mustache and a Wait, does she, does she have bad timing? Is that what happens? She just keeps like not, nagging at you and get up, come on, let's do it, and you're just like ten ahead. times a day. Yeah, what? Ten that's, times that's, a what, day. That's witchcraft. That's exactly yeah, it witchcraft. Good lord. I I, I think you need to, <laughs> David. You need to figure out a way to not make it about the sex because Doctor Drew's right. I, listen, I'm all for a chick who really loves sex and 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 understands her body and all that. That's great. But seven times a day at age eighteen, something's up, and you can't. You're not going to be able to quench her thirst. No, it's there's gonna... something deeper here, and um, it's pardon the pun, but you need to you need to really like. It's not your responsibility to to, to take care of this, you know. Yeah, don't don't yeah. don't go to Seven Eleven and get super you know, bunny sticker gold milk, little tiny pills. It's like uh, you know, it's like Viagra, but nah, different. dog, I get the 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 extends, dog. You Ext- know what I'm saying? Extends, like I dog. crush them up with a little scante, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me all crazy, dog. Yeah, hey, Two little tiny extends, okay, my, man. My pitos all veiny, dog. Oh, Listen, come on, man. Come on. You know what I'm saying, Pablo? Hey, you, you ever know, get like when your pitos like all veins and like? Oh a, yeah, man. If you're standing up, the dog's like looking at it too. You oh, know, it's it crazy. looks like a Dr. Drew. It looks like your forearm. A buck. <laughs> Holding an apple. Yeah. You know, <laughs> crazy. No, it looks like. <laughs> hey, you ever like go. <laughs> talking to me? Yeah, you ever go down like, like TJ Dog? Yeah. You see the, the little homeboys holding the mangoes? That's what my pito looks like when I eat the enzymes with the with the como si with the yayo. It's like hard, it's hard, hard like a diamond. Like you, you know, know what I'm saying? Shine yeah. bright like a diamond. Like dog. a diamond, dog. You know, old people use it so they don't roll off the bed, you know? When <laughs> sometimes like when I go to down to visit my uncle, when I go down to visit What's Reaper. What's your uncle's name? Reaper. When I go down to visit Reaper down in Cuernavaca, uh-huh. I let my pito get tan, dog, because you know there's like the, the Mayans and stuff. They don't care nothing if you just walk around naked. And then my pito looks like it looks like all tan. And I was like, damn, dog. My pito looks like Rihanna's leg. Oh my god, man! It's like two lumberjacks around it running, and you know. Oh, Pablo knows. What's up, you get, know. you get drunk, you know, it walks you home. You know. Later, Crazy. Rudy. Hey, Dan. How's it going? What's up, buddy? Uh, so it's a long, complicated story, but I'll try to make it as simple as I can. That's a bad um, lead-in. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a family friend. Uh, he's sort of like my uncle at this point. Uh, we're very close, and I'm close with him and his wife. They have a daughter who, for the past four years, has not spoken to them because she ran off with her boyfriend. Hmm. How old is she? They are, how old is she? She's 24. Okay. They have quite a bit of money, 
and she had a trust fund in her name, which she gave them power of attorney um, up until now. She's now fighting the parents for that money because her boyfriend, who had been controlling her this entire time, um, he was always telling her what to do, what to get, what to, like, absolutely controlling her. There's no doubt about it. He runs her. It's now causing problems with their marriage, and I recently found cocaine in his drawers. Or who's uh, whose marriage? Um, they, my uncle, basically. Ah. Mm. Huge. Did you snort the yayo? Say that again? You you found coke in his drawer. Did he snort it? Did he? No. No, did you? I, oh, did I? No. No. Snooping through the drawers, huh? I mean, if you're going to find hmm. someone's coke, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well I'm, I'm just saying. Hey, go on, man. Really go on, go on. Uh, all right, so, so, I mean, oh, uh, I understand this guy's very close to you. I understand that this woman or this girl and, and this man seem like family to you, but... What I mean, like, where I, I'm not I'm not saying you shouldn't, but isn't it kind of weird? Like, where do you draw the line as just a friend of the family for intervening? You know, I mean, I, I, at what point do you feel like this is your responsibility? I, that's the thing. And what uh, can you do? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. It's like it's you're in a weird place. I, I appreciate that you're so concerned, and I appreciate that it seems like you have a level head on your shoulders. But where where do you go from here? I mean, it's not your dad. It's not your sister or something. You know. It, I know, it, but. They are people that I actually genuinely care about. They've always helped me out. Um, I mean, they helped me pay my way through the first year of medical school. Jesus. Oh, wow. And it's nice. Like, I don't even know, but I think I might be in the will. Like, I'm. I basically took her place after. He grew up in the mean so streets of they LA. They are people I genuinely care about. Drew, what I what is it you'd like to do? Um. So, the, uh, his his wife, uncle, wants to give her the money, and in the hopes that it will bring her back. That will not happen. He absolutely. That will he not happen. Does, I know. He absolutely does not want to give her the money because he knows that the boyfriend's going to be using it. All right. So, what if you got into what? What if, as a contingency for her? receiving some version of the money, some 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 payback, uh, that they they agree to sitting in a professional's office and sort of having at, at it, finding out what's going on here. Let let somebody objectively not they'll need to talk to an attorney too, probably. Right, but, but you're right. But they they could put that on paper. They could put that on like legal the only, zoom. Yeah. How about therapists. <laughs> so you sit in there and go, why is she so angry? Is she basically let's put that is she like a cult victim? Is she been uh, you know you know you can have a cult of one. <laughs> where people well, no, there is where people do do think about these things that way. Where people pull on get under the sway of a coercive and controlling relationship, it's like being in a cult, and they forsake everything else in their life. And if she, if the therapist identifies that kind of relationship, there are things that can be done. All right, Dan, that's about as good of advice as you're going to get, man. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one is the number. Pablo Francisco joins us this evening. You're in good hands with us, Steve. He'll be all over the country, but he'll also be in Brea this Thursday through Sunday. If you're here in Southern California, go check him out at the Brea Improv. Go to pablofrancisco.com for all the details. Later tonight, we want to know, what's the craziest thing someone said to you during sex? Hmm. I can think of some, some doozies. Yeah, I can uh, go back in the little files and forensic files and sexual files and look, find out. Look through the DNA. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Love line. Loveline is no longer limited to the coast-to-coast -coast radio model. That's true, Dr. Drew. We are now global and on demand. Go to podcastone.com where you can download full shows right to your computer or phone and take us with you on your commute or even to work or to the gym, grocery shop, wherever you're going. Take it, download it. The same old Loveline show that airs nightly on the radio near you. They're all now available whenever and wherever you want. The free Loveline podcast only from Podcast One at podcastone, podcastone.com. Yeah. One call. One call. Is all it takes. 1 800 Love 191. 1 800 Love 191. Start punching in the numbers now so you're ready when Loveline returns. Tune in on Real Self Knowledge.
Yeah, buddy. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one is the number. Pablo Francisco is here. It's so, almost time for the open forum. We want to know what's the strangest thing anybody's ever said to you during sex, and it could be just anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be so groundbreaking or like uh, show stopping. It's just oftentimes during coitus, things come out of your mouth that you don't necessarily mean and or or want to come out of your mouth, and it can be alarming. Yeah. Hello, Peter. Yes, sir. That's something I said the first time I had gay sex. Hello, Peter. Hello. What's up, Peter? Hi. Uh, Pablo, I just want to let you know, I saw you at the Bray Improv a few years back, and you were amazing. Oh, thank you very so. much, bro. Thanks, man. You come on um, in, I'll get you some chicken fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my situation goes like this. Um, I've been dating this girl on and off for about three years. Mm-hmm. Um, we broke up about three weeks ago. And a week and a half ago, I found out she told me that she was pregnant with my child. Holy! Wow. Wait, yeah. wait. How long you been dating? Uh, on and off for about three years. And how long on before this pregnancy? Um, how long on before the pregnancy? Probably eight months. Okay. Um, basically, we've been on and off because I didn't treat her right. I was disrespectful. Um, I was unfaithful. Um, and basically just treated her like poop. Um, so now, um, obviously, I mean, when we broke up, I, I wanted to get back together. Um, so especially now that I hear that she's having my kid. Wait, 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 um, you broken up now? Yeah, we broke up three weeks ago. And while you were broken up, she then presents with the pregnancy. I'm sorry, say that again? While you were broken up, that's when she presents with the pregnancy. Correct. Funny. So, so she told me that she was pregnant, and you know my intentions were to get back together um, even before I found out that she was pregnant. So now it's even heightened, and um, she just doesn't trust me, you know, for real good reasons. But there's no trust or anything like that. She Does she want to try to to heal it up for on behalf of this pregnancy? Um, I mean, yes. She overall. does. Okay. So what's the question? How do I earn her trust back? You, sp- you be I a good husband her? and caretaker. It's going to take time, a couple years. Can I say something here? And it may not sound all that nice. Not but, his baby? Well, no. Can we just establish that it's definitely your kid first? Yeah. I have no doubt that it is mine. Um, uh, those I, are terrible words to say. Yeah, man, because I could have <laughs> walked right in there and, you know, hit that too. You know, Yeah, I up? mean, it could have easily been him. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That guy. Um, it could be the Kool Aid Man. I didn't. I didn't ask just because. Well, you're not going to hear a truthful answer in any event. That's and listen, okay. I get it. That's not a fun topic to broach. Well, they're sneaky, those girls. You know what I'm saying? They're like sneaky. It's true. That's well, right. Again, to answer your question, trust is something that has to be earned. Takes time. Mr. Schwarzenegger, when you found out that uh, you know you had when impregnated his, when that, his wife the housekeeper, found out. how did you how did you take care of that situation? Well, let me tell you something. The housekeeper's name Maria too. So you know, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. sometimes doing conversation, it's I, go, I go, "Hey, Maria." And, oh, I, uh, it's okay, you know. <laughs> and then when she find out, the my accountant come to me, tell me what's happening. I go, "Gosh, damn it! They need to go back to Mexico, build a put a Home Depot in Mexico, so they can hang out there." There you go, Peter. That's what I was doing. Wait, I didn't understand how. It's, wait, how does that help, Peter? Oh, you know, Peter. No. Okay, let me tell you. Yeah. You know what, Peter? I got to get out of here. The maids coming out. There's two more maids auditioning to audition. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Good luck to you. Thanks, Peter. Listen, you got to be direct with her. There's. I mean, you're not talking about uh, how do I patch things together with this lo- girl that I am really into uh, in math class. This is a woman who potentially is the mother of your child. You got it, it, there. There's no like ifs, ands, or buts about this one. You got to be dealing with this ASAP, and you got to deal with it head on. You know. Yeah. And there's I a very see. good. Ch- there's a very good chance she's not going to trust you. Is he and faithful? Well, I mean, no. He was. Sorry, but no. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, were you faithful? I mean, are you true? Are you cool? Are you no? Cool? He's, been, he's been not cool. That he wants to re-earn her oh. trust. Oh, so God. okay, yeah, go at it. Be a good guy, and take you know, and be trustful, trustworthy for the next from now on. But if she's not responsive and giving me opportunities to show her that I want, you to just said that she wanted to heal this relationship on behalf of the pregnancy. You can do it, bro. I wanted to. No, you said she did. Now, does she want to give this a try since she's pregnant with your child? 
I don't know. Well, I'm, uh, the probability is she will be. I, I'm going to predict she will be. So go find out, okay? All right. All right. Thank All right, you dude. so much. Yeah. Good luck, dude. You're going to make it, dude. Hello, Holly. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. <laughs> We're good. How are you? I'm good. Okay. So I have a problem where it seems like every guy that I start to get interested in either just puts me in the friend zone or, um, well, puts me in the friend zone, and then if I try to get out of that, I end up putting out too soon, and then I feel like I just become a sex buddy, and I just can't That's, I think, find a happy medium. Well, Holly, I obviously I'm not a young lady like you, but I have talked to a lot of girls recently. In fact, that's what brought up that that topic, Drew, that I brought in last week about how like guys seem to be have no decorum. Yeah. yeah. But I do think that a lot of girls, you know, between twenty one to thirty, deal with that problem where it's like they they start to understand that sex is a different commodity to young men, and then they either use it as a bargaining chip to try to get these guys to stay in a relationship. Or they end up not giving it soon enough, and then these guys friend zone them, and right. you're, you're stuck kind of in this weird middle zone. Um, yeah. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could say, and I know this sounds like such meaningless advice. like it's so, It sounds so hallmark, but you just kind of got to keep searching until you right. find a guy where it happens organically. Yeah. You where gotta, you don't feel you the presence of— Kiss a lot of frogs, so to speak. Yeah. I've kissed so many frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Go to e harmony. I'm just so sick of it. Yeah, I'm sorry, have you tried online dating? Yeah, I mean, I go, I'm on Tinder, which is kind of a hookup app, but I did like the Plenty of Fish, and um, I was even on Match for a couple months, but I can't afford it anymore. Okay. And it's just not. I just don't click it. Like every guy I go out with, if I if I'm interested, they're not, or if they're or they're way too into me and too clingy, and I can't handle that. Date older so, guys. I actually just got out of a semi-serious relationship with a 30-year-old, but he had a kid, and it was All right, well, but keep me. dating older guys. They, men become human beings again around 28 in terms of yeah. their ability to, to be, stable, be serious in a relationship. You live in Tennessee? I live in Colorado. <laughs> oh, okay, I just check. Denver, man, you know, that's uh, it's a good place to pick up guys, you know. Pot's legal, know. and... But uh, it's also the physical look, you know, looks uh, a lot of guys go for too. I mean, you got to get your best, you know, mechanics down and take the good picks and take, you know, that's what uh, I don't mean to sound like that. But attitude and personality and boo boo bee boo, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, some guys sometimes go. You got to go for the look. Sometimes. No, not some guys. All guys. All guys. Yeah, you know? I mean, don't, I I'm not saying all guys are only about looks, but all men, all of them, are looks first. You have to pass that sniff oh, test, know. or else the, nothing else goes from there. Yeah, I listen to you guys every night, and like I completely agree with you. Every guy wants to bone their best, their girlfriends, <laughs> and then they just become friends. Yeah, after so long. So. All right. Well, listen. I wish you the best of luck. You sound very sweet, and I and like, like I said, if it gives you any solace, I know that there's a lot of girls that are struggling with the exact same thing that you are. Okay, it does kind of. All righty. Just got to find the right one. It's All right. Rock, it's a rock and roll attitude, man. The women who have like that rock and roll attitude are the coolest. Like, oh, come on, babe. It's okay. Yeah. You know, they don't get jealous that much, even though they are kind of thing. It's tough, though, when you're a young woman because you try to surround yourself with young men, and young men are insane. Yes. You know? Hello, Emma. Yes. What's up, baby? I think Pablo can help you out with this problem. Okay. So my boyfriend and I, we had anal sex for the first time, mm -hmm. and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was. And it was. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And we actually went for quite a long time. And then now sometimes it still it still feels great. And then other times it's absolutely excruciating. And <laughs> I don't know what's going wrong. Well, there's a penis in your butt. Well, yeah, that, that position's wrong. Get to the positions that are good, you know, and then talk to, you know, do the thing you got to do. You know, it's... Uh, I mean, how many... What, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the count on that? How many bads, how many goods? Um, it's like half and half. Mm. All right. Uh, and let's I go to the clip. To that first time where it was just amazing. Well, okay. All here's the here's the thing. Even with vaginal sex, and I've never had vaginal sex, <laughs> but like the vagina is uh, like a tunnel, and it goes in right. certain directions, and like certain positions really accommodate said directions. Some don't. And I'm imagining that your poop chute is even more of a, like, treacherous tunnel. 
So if you find the right... Wouldn't it have, like, more leeway, though? No! It's the least leeway, maybe, in your entire body. The tissue in your butthole is really not leeway-friendly. There's no G-spot in there, you know what I'm saying? Drew, back me. Like, the anal tissue is really, like, Mm. about as delicate as it comes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the clip. (laughs) Johnny? Oh, but then... But it feels great sometimes. I, I, I said, oh my so, god. I, I, why? Maybe she has hemorrhoids. Maybe she has fissures. Maybe she just has spasms. Derek Ooh, Fisher knows. lives in her butt. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one's the number. Pablo Francisco's here. It's time for the open forum. One eight hundred Love one nine one's the number. Tell us the craziest thing that someone's ever said to you during sex. Okay. That's right. It's Love Line. your opinions and insight. Mother has old-fashioned ideas. Well, I don't approve of it. Here's tonight's Open Forum. Yes! It's time for the Open Forum. What's the craziest thing someone's ever, <laughs> someone's ever said to you during sex? We already have one call on the line, which is st- just stellar. Um, but oftentimes during sex, it's like a, a fist fight or something, or war. It's the most extreme your emotions get. Uh, I mean, it really is the height of human emotion. That being said... Some crazy stuff gets said. So we want to know what are the craziest things someone's ever said to you. I was having sex with a really bad woman. Mm-hmm. Um, this was the girl I stole her meth, Drew, I told you, and I brought it back. <laughs> yeah, I remember the meth okay. stealing story. So I, I was at BJ's in Huntington Beach. All right. Uh-huh. And I'm drinking. In day, it was daytime drinking on a Sunday <laughs> in Huntington Beach. And uh, there's this, like, really trashy girl comes up to the bar. She's like, what's your name? <laughs> but she was very pretty, but she was like, she had definitely seen her best days, and she had lived a hard life, I could tell. Like, she had lived hard. Well, how was her body, though? It was good. I mean, she was All a right. really, like, like beautiful woman, but she had uh, clearly probably done a lot of drugs and, and not taken care of herself. She has a lot of miles, but she still cooks? Yes, she still okay. cooks. So we start talking, and almost immediately I was like, uh, you got any dope? All right. You know, and she's like, yeah, 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 I can actually hook up some more down. You know, I meet this guy at the park. So we get in my car, and we drive to go hook up speed. Right. And uh, we get some, and we go back to her house and immediately start bumping rails and having sex. So we start having sex, and, like, there's someone ringing the doorbell and mm-hmm. like every like, in, like, 20-minute intervals. Oh, and we're wow. actively having sex. And she, she doesn't acknowledge it, and I don't really seem to care. But then after, like, the third time, she's like, oh, it's probably my husband. Oh, and I'm well, like, what? What? Yeah. Like, it was, like, the most, like, Scoob. Yeah. And I go, what do you mean? She's like, oh, we're, we're strange. He's a dick. And she starts, like, bad-mouthing him. Oh. And then so I'm like, oh, th- that was the craziest thing she said. And so, but just to finish the story, <laughs> she gets up to go, like, deal with her husband. I could hear this guy just screaming bloody murder at her. And she's screaming back at him. And I'm thinking to myself, like, am I? I'm not gonna fight anyone over this girl that I just. And I'm and I'm like also looking at this table of like probably like a, a 16th of meth. And I'm like, eh. I put my pants on and scooped it all into a baggie. <laughs> went out the side window and walked around the back side of the house in my car and went home. Oh drove back to Pasadena. God. Who and, got this skank? Me. Yeah. Who did this skank? Me. Who knocked on the door? Me. Okay, but uh, <laughs> wow. wow. Pablo, what was Shaggy's response? Like Scoob, <laughs> quit. Get get your penis out of the flashlight, Scoob. <laughs> get, what's the what's your car called? The magical mystery. The, the mystery machine. Come on, no mystery car, Scoob. Quackity. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kasem, has anybody ever said anything during sex? That's right. I'm Casey Kasem, and I do Shaggy. That's right. And here's a dedication. It says, "Dear Casey, my wife was mauled by a bunch of pit bulls. Will you please play Who Let the Dogs Out?" But anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> dear Casey. <laughs> <laughs> if you're at all familiar with any uh, audio of Mr. Kasem right. in a recording studio, that's the best. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. <Damn. laughs> Hello. Ponderous. What's Hello, up, Matthew? Matthew? Into a dog record? <laughs> Go ahead, Matthew. Um, am I saying what? Yes, yes. please. Yes. Uh, well, so it was both our first times, and so we—I was like trying to put it in. You know, it was all new to me, 
And, um, you know, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And then she looks at me and she says, am I even a girl? What? And, uh, yeah, I was about as shocked as you were. Um, am I even really, a girl? It didn't really hit Hard. me at the time. Cause you know, like we were having sex, but you know, uh, they have now a that I think about Ooh. it, I've thought about it for a while, <laughs> and that just still scares Like, each time I think about it, it scares uh, me more. I wonder if she meant it, like, in an existential sense, or if she meant, no, like, like am I ma- physically a girl? What's the matter with yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Do they have orgasm? Like, oh! Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, oh, here yeah. we go. Oh. There's one woman on the board. All, all the rest are men. It's yeah. interesting. Uh, hello, Ricky. Don't lose that number. <laughs> yeah. So, it was screw me like my dad does. Oh! Screw no me. way. Someone said that to you? Yes. Wow. Was she at all trying to be funny? I don't. She. What she told me at first or after was that it was. Uh, she was trying to turn me on. Oh. But that, I was just told done. I, I broke up with her the next day. And it wasn't daddy. Oh. It was like dad. Dad. Oh. Not daddy. Hey. Wait, wait, stepdad was in there. Oh, oh. 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 Oh my gosh. We have such good calls. Hello, Betty. Hello. Hi, Betty. Tell us what the strangest thing someone's told you during sex. Okay. Story goes like this. Um, I met a gentleman online, and we'd been chatting for quite a while, and he finally came to meet me, and we decided to hook up, and he pulled out a flashlight and told me that he has a flashlight, and he has to look down there first. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) God. Bonnie! Wow. Scoob! Uh, What did you say? I don't know what he was looking for. Uh, I was kind of rendered speechless at that moment. Did you wait? 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 Did you continue to have sex with him? Dig dug. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 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 What was he a spelunker? Like why? Like what does he have to? He has to do an examination. How dare you? I don't know. I just know what. But, uh, and what did you say? What did he say? He just said he ought to look down there first, and I guess everything checked out okay because then everything happened. Uh, I romance in the storm. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. Uh, I love Carlos. This Carlos, hello. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, guys? Long time, first time. Remember, you're on the radio. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the Skinner told me to be very careful, and I will promise to be, uh, will not be a douchebag like a lot of other people are. All right. Um, I was dating a girl who was a complete scumbagette. Um, <laughs> scumbagette. That's a terrible <laughs> piece of bread. Uh, 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 oh, bonjour. Uh, uh, <laughs> look at this scumbagette. <laughs> my, my, uh, so, let me preface that. I'm a heavy set guy, so I kind of uh-huh. got to take what I can get. So you enjoy the scumbagette? Hey. <laughs> Up until this part, so we were in, we were in the in the act of you know doing it. Right. So um, <laughs> she grabs me by the shoulders, pulls me towards her, which being as big as I am is already scary for her. I'm assuming, but she says, "Do it harder, you fat f word." <laughs> <laughs> so it completely derails me. So I'm I'm trying to go. I'm trying to do my thing. You know, I'm trying to be strong like both. Dave, Good is this you, you, man? Is this Dave? Good attitude, though, man. Give it to me. You have, a good, you have a good attitude, though, bro. I'm digging. That's cool. Wait, 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 I mean, wait, wait, wait. Stop, I, stop, Carlos. Okay, wait. So she says that to you. How old were you when this happened? 21? Dude, I mean, Oof. okay. All joking aside, you already admitted you were, you're a heavy set guy. That had to be very humiliating at, the, at that point. It's, it's, it's similar to graduating hmm. high school. Taking the thing, and then when you when you would take a step, you would split your pants, and everyone just sees your. Oh, it, it, yeah. It, 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 it is. It's a, it was completely derailed. I, 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 I had a, it's like a lost puppy look. Uh, I just oh. Oh, yeah. and then it turned into a fight where I called her the B word. She called me. Then it ended up she slapped me like twice. So I'm trying to walk out of this lady's house, holding my clothes on a walk of shame, trying to hide my disgusting male nudity. And it was yeah. I the last thing I heard was the door's closing. She was throwing one over. Her, Slide shoes at me. Oh, dude. Well, did you finish at least? I wanted to, <laughs> but it, it kind of killed it. I was. We esta- I, was I mean, like we can we can uh, 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 automatically assume that you wanted to finish. Oh, um, God. but did you? No. No. No, no because it, it's the thing of it, you know what it felt like. 
standing all standing all day in line at 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 an amusement park, getting there and seeing that the belt doesn't fit. No. So I just sit, I sit in the ride, I put my head down, and I walk to the other side and I leave. Drew has to deal with that sometimes because of the splitter. You know, he can't get on certain amusement rides; it's just too big in the oh, pants. That's it. That's yeah. it. One eight hundred L O V. You gonna make it, man? You'll be all right, brother. You got a good attitude. I agree. I can power through, and I hope that many a woman uh, f- facilitates her penis properly and doesn't call you a fat f. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one. You know, Krista says that today, right? Yeah. Oh no, but we know that for a fact yeah. because Dave and Krista both tell us. <laughs> she said, "Dave said like I'm trying to get sex. One time I was trying to get sexy, and, and he like got down to his boxers and he went to like." Like alluringly walk towards, and she's like, "You're fat. You're so fat." <laughs> yeah, it's like Peter Griffin being. Yeah. Being sexy. <laughs> Poor Dave. Don't. I we need I'm to have talk Dave. to him tomorrow. Okay, talk to him about this. I will say that I care about him. I really do. I love Dave the King of Mexico as a person, and sometimes I really wish that she would be nicer to him. <laughs> Once, twice, three times a lady. Pablo Francisco is here. Everybody. Man, thanks, man. And he is going to be joining us for one more break. And that one more break is the rest of the open forum. We want to know, what's the craziest thing someone's ever said to you during sex? Remember, Pablo Francisco, one of the most talented men on the planet, will be at the Brea Improv this Thursday through this Sunday. Go to pablofrancisco.com. Go to improv.com. Either or. Get yourself some tickets. Find out when he's coming to your town if you're not here in Southern California. More of the open forum here on Loveline. Straight ahead. All it takes. Exactly. One eight hundred love one nine one. One eight hundred love one nine one. Love lines coming back. Wap and button do. All right, here we go. Hi, I'm Michael D. Catherwood. It's Dr. Drew. Pablo Francisco. The one and only Pablo Francisco, <laughs> one of the most talented comedians Thanks, I know personally. Thanks, and man. he's going to be on Loveline this evening. It's going to be fantastic. Nice. Tomorrow. Yes, Marnie is... and uh, Krista. Okay. Hey, Dr. Drew. Yeah, Mike. The ladies from the Ask Women podcast. You know, uh, Mooney and, and Marnie Kirky and Kristen. And Slurpee. And, and I'll be in Atlanta. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. You'll be joining us from Atlanta on one of them satellite phones. Yep. Ted Turner's going to throw you one. Yep. It's going to be great. Great show tonight with the Ask Women ladies on Loveline. On the world famous K-Rock.
1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the number. Ladies and gentlemen, you already have your plans for this weekend. It's go to the Brea Improv and see Car uh, Pablo Francisco. Carlos, too, his brother. Pablo Francisco at the Brea Improv this weekend, Thursday through Sunday. Go to improv.com or you can go to pablofrancisco.com. There is a link there for all your Pablo Francisco needs. Bro. He joins us this evening, and we are in the middle of the open forum, Dr. Drew. Talking about the craziest things people have said during sex, we've had some crazy ones. I thought mine was crazy. Not even close. No. Hello, Josh. Yeah, hi. Hi. So, the craziest thing I heard when I was having sex was she told me to put my toe in her uh, butt. Her toe? Her, my toe in her butt. What? And wow. out of the blue, it wasn't like, it wasn't working her way down there. She wasn't like, put your finger there, put your, it was just out of the blue well, toe. I was, I, I was like doing her from behind. What's the STD on that? Jeez. All right, thank you, Josh. Call Dr. Souls. Hello, <laughs> De Denine? Denine. Yes. Hi. Uh, so the worst thing that's been said to me was during sex, he asked me if he can poop on my stomach. Ah! <laughs> Guten Tag. Yeah. <laughs> Rabbit. Uh. Holy shiza, Batman. <laughs> what, what Holy the... bad butt cheeks, Batman. What did you think? I mean, I was pretty kind of like, I thought he was joking at first, and then apparently he wasn't. <laughs> then I got kind of grossed out and stopped. He later explained that this was like something he wants to do, and that like no girl wants to do it. And I'm like, well, shocking. Yeah, kind of gross. It, was he surprised by that? <laughs> Where'd you meet him on buttplug.com? <laughs> was I surprised? Yeah, I was pretty disgusting. Bung hey, she, met him him at she met him at the German consulate. She met him on Fart Monkey. Well, good times. Oh, Denine, you are sweet. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Hey, how's it going, guys? Oh, yours is pretty crazy. This is amazing. Yeah, yours is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, so this was uh, this girl that had been coming on to me back when I was in high school, um, constantly wanting to do stuff with me. I was always terrified because <laughs> my sister had a baby at a very young age, uh. so I was terrified of getting a girl pregnant. Um, so... We got into it, and she knew of my concerns and shook me dead in the eye and said, don't worry about it, I'm pregnant. And Oh, don't worry about the condom? Was, don't worry about the condom, yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. pregnant. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you react to that? I got up, I did not, I, I stopped. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, if, yeah, I don't need you to go to that drastic a measure, but, uh, oh wow, you didn't even contemplate like butt sex or anything? No, I, I was wait. How would that work? Why out. was that at all a better option? I don't know. Butt sex. I'll never forget when the girl called and she's like, "I was, I was like, I was a concert. I love this band." And I went backstage. I couldn't believe I was actually with them. And the guy's like, "Let's just have sex right now." And I was like, totally ready to, but we didn't have a condom, so I just did it in his butt, and like, or we did it in my butt. And I was like, "Oh yes," because the gay community has proved that no diseases can be transferred through the butt. Ugh. She was solve mysteries. Hello. <laughs> Information. Hello, Christian. Hello. What is the, uh, what is it, oh my God, what's the crazy thing that someone said to you during sex? Okay, so the craziest thing that someone ever said to me during sex was he wanted to, so he told me that he wanted to F my dirty brown Mexican hole. <laughs> <laughs> The guys, Mex all yes. yeah, the Mexican hall. He was like, um, he was white. he was half white and half Japanese, <laughs> and he had this thing. Yeah. He wanted me to call him daddy, daddy and daddy. yeah, he wanted right down the drug tunnel, huh? It's crazy. Yeah, it was exactly. That was, I felt like I was. <laughs> was he more like? Did he appear and sound more Japanese or or more white? He was yeah, totally pure Japanese, but he sounded white. He oh. sounded like a girl. Oh. He was, yeah, like he yeah. went to boarding school. I, I would have liked it better if he was like Yakuza. <laughs> like he was like, oh, <laughs> it would have been, I break uh, you off in your yeah, dirty brown yeah, hole. Stop midway, but oh. I just continued. <laughs> oh, your dirty Mexican hole. Oh, I shall go to No, so I got to break you under. Oh, he'll come in the corner fish. 
in your brown <laughs> hole. Ooh, you are like a Dakota fish. <laughs> I break you off in your dirty Mexican hole. You love Dakota fish with your big Mexican <laughs> hole. Jeez. Hello, Alex. <laughs> in your dirty hole. That's right. I'm Hello, Casey Alex. Kasim. Okay, so uh, at my, my first college, I had a first date with a girl. I uh, met her at a sorority get-together. I'm not in a fraternity, but we the night went great. It went so great that I ended up getting her back into my room, and we started having sex. And she, it was a first red sign when she said, oh, no, stop, like, like she meant stop. So I did immediately, and I was like, what's wrong? And she said, oh, no, I just say random things when I'm having sex. <laughs> I was like, whatever, okay, mm -hmm. keep going. Uh, still in the mood and then the second time she said oh no please oh, get off and so i got off immediately because i didn't want uh any wrong mix-ups and feelings and she said oh she started apologizing she she started acting very sweet and everything and just said that she just gets really weird during sex and she can't control what she says mm -hmm. and we keep going a little bit more a few minutes in and then she screams at the top of her lungs i have a four-story house i had a roommate on the fourth story i was on the bottom said you don't know anything about 90210 <laughs> what yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Brenda. What the hell? Three, three on top of her lungs. You don't know nothing about that. Are you sure it oh, yeah. wasn't are you sure it wasn't Dr. Drew and you were hosting a radio show with him? Oh. <laughs> what 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 did you learn anything more about her? Nothing. I she, she was so embarrassed. She she got all her stuff and I basically ran out of my house naked. Wow. Wow. That is, uh, what is that, uh, Tourette's? Uh, it's a weird kind of... 90120 oh, Jeffersons! Oh, my God! <laughs> Hello, Bundies. Hello, Tim. Hello. Yours is awesome. Oh, uh, thank you. D tell your story, sir. Okay, so, uh, dating a girl, we had a, a little problem once, so we used Plan B, and then um, we broke up for a couple weeks. We come, we get back together, and since we had broken up, she's no longer on the pill. So, um... During sex, oh, we went out for the night, got a bunch of drinks, got nice and lubed up, went home and uh, had sex. And during it, um, she said, I'm asking, you no, know, where should I finish? She says inside. So um, I say, uh, I'm kind of like annoyed because she had complained about how much it cost last time. And she says, no, 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 don't worry. You bought the drinks all by the plan B. Oh, oh, oh. wow. Oh. Plan B. <laughs> that is sexy as ever. I worked. I, I did it, and no kids, so I'm good to go. It wow. Worked. Hello, Corey. It worked. Hey. Uh, well, one time, my ex-girlfriend and I, we were going at it for like 10, 15 minutes, and then she grabs me and stops and says, put it in my dry hole. Oh, Canada dry hole. Put it in my dry hole. Put it in my dry hole. Was that at all hot? Uh, it was really awkward, and I got out of there as soon as I could. Uh, oh, man. Put it in my dry hole. Hello, Ry Ryan, Rianne, what's your name? Rianne. Rianne, please tell us your story. Okay. You remember, again, remember you're on the radio, but I think you can say those words. Just be careful. I double checked. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was having sex with this guy that was, I think he was probably a year and a half younger than me, and I met him at work at the time when I was working at Hot Topic, which I know <laughs> that something that is something that Pablo likes to talk about, so I thought I'd bring it up. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Hot topic. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so then we go back to my house, and he, he brings it up, like, when we're trying to get in the mood for it, he's like, so do you like being dirty talk to? I'm like, yeah, you know, that's cool, whatever. So we're having sex, and he's on top, and he whispers in my ear, he's like, I love effing your big pussy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I w he whispered, and I and I thought I heard him say that. So I was like, "What?" I'm like, "Just say it louder, you know, louder." And so he's in, he's yelling it. Oh, wow! Was and that echo? I no. definitely think that I took the situation better than he did. I busted up laughing right at, as soon as he yelled it to the point where he was like, "I felt him go flaccid inside <laughs> of me," oh. and I was just like, "I gotta go." Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I, look at oh, some of these. Yeah. Wild stuff. Pablo Francisco joins us. We're in the middle of the open forum. You can see Pablo at the Brea Improv this week. Uh, Johnny, the next one would Karnak say. Karnak, well, let me take you off. Uh-huh. All right. And uh, 
let's see, uh, Pillsbury. Uh, <laughs> uh, a hoe, a girl, and a, and a and who has a big toe with dough. I, I don't know. I would, <laughs> dough, dough, to, topic, go. Hello, Grace. Hi. Go ahead, Grace. Um, so I had a friend of benefit, um, and we were experimenting with some stuff, and he asked me while we were having sex if he could pee in me. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Pee in you? Oh. Girl, let me pee in you. <laughs> My mind's telling me no. <laughs> um, and and uh, how, how did that work out? Um, well, I told him no, and then after that, our uh, experimenting kind of went to a lull, and then it pretty much ended. Wow! But for yeah. the grace of God, yeah. After that, they go down the porkies for their, from two to the four for their pot stickers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. Yeah, so uh, it was during the height of all the vampire stuff that was going on. Vampire yeah. Diaries That's and all crap. That yeah, no doubt. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, we're using this uh, Trojan, like, icy hot gun. I'm not sure if you guys, like, have like seen it. So, like, it, when hot. you put it on, it's, like, super hot. And then, like, at the, at the very end. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fire nice. Trojan yeah, fire nice. That's right. That's yeah. right. Fire nice. Yeah, so we were using that. And then uh, towards the end, when it was started getting, getting cold, she's like, she was like, so that's what I think a vampire feels like. Oh. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I just got off and just... Hot and cold. It. You're trying to find something? That sounds too. yucky. Yep, it was very, very yucky. <clears throat> Hello, Ian. Yucky. Who's right. yucky? Hey, guys. Uh, First time caller. Please tell us the strange thing that someone told you during sex. Yeah, so I'm in Cancun. This is like a uh, high school graduation trip or whatever. Yeah. And I meet this British girl. And, uh, you know, one thing leads to another on the beach. She just, in the middle of sex... I'm not wearing a condom, first of all, because uh, she just convinced me. That Condoms are for punks. <laughs> yeah, and if you uh, meet random people in Cancun, it's always a good idea yeah. to have sex with no protection. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. That was, I've, got a, I've got a Nigerian hooker, too, that I can throw your way. <laughs> I mean, she seemed like a clean British girl. Oh, yeah, so you can anyways, always tell by looking at people. So, anyways, she uh, just yells, fill me up. <laughs> 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 All right, Pablo and I are going to reenact that moment. I'm going to be Ian. No. And she's going to be, yeah. and Pablo's going to be, what was her name? Do you remember? Her name was Emma. All right, you're Emma. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ian. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Fill me up. <laughs> what? Huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Hello, Nick. Dot com. Hey, guys. How you doing? Please tell us the strange thing that someone told you during sex. Um, I was having sex with my boyfriend, and he said, are you into role-playing? And I'm like, okay. So I'm expecting him to blindfold me and tie me up for something. He came in with his identical twin brother. <gasps> oh. And it was like, one, and I did it. Face one from off. the front, one from the back. No, you did Face not. off. You had sex with his t identical twin brother? Yeah, it was like what? It was like two eyes behind my head, you know? It was awesome. You are me, and you are me, and I am you. Ah. And you are me, and you get in there. Remember Total you Rico? Know, you, do, you are doing me. Come on, you can do it. It's like Total yeah. Rico. Hey, there was two me. me. I do nana. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it. You are me, and I am you. Uh, <laughs> Pablo, it was a very enjoyable evening. You want to hear my story? Yes, please, sir. Yeah, I, were, I rolled over. I got really drunk off Rumpelmans, right? And I turned over and that... Uh, Rumpelmans? Rumpelmans, right? And it's turned over and the girl goes, I will never, ever take the place of your mama, boy. Oh. But I swear to God, no. Uh, had this girl up at a Holiday Inn one time and had her, uh, you know, against the wall and, you know, butt facing me and going at it. And Paul Mitchell, rep representative chick, she's hot, right? And all of a sudden she goes, hey! Made that noise, I swear to God. That's it. <laughs> and it wasn't like she was consistently making that noise. No, it no, it's just, it's out of boo. <laughs> and I went, Zoink Scoob! <laughs> <laughs> Give me a super call. Go to PabloFrancisco.com. You can check out when he's coming to your town. <laughs> He'll be at the Brand Improv Jack this Garcia. Thursday through Sunday. Uh, thank you so much, Pablo. Really Thanks for having it, man. me, man. Yeah, of course. Now it's time to take your qual calls regarding anything you want here on Love Line. So, have you had your daily dose of Adam Carolla yet? Nope. Well, maybe you want to listen to Loveline when you want, where you want. Or you want to hear Adam and Dr. Drew do a classic Loveline from the 90s. Yes! Then do yourself a favor and get to podcastone.com right now. That's podcastone.com. This, this is Loveline. It's a groovy way of relaxing. Sit tight. Loveline's coming back.
Oh. Big night. That was a fun night of, yeah. of, of radio with Pablo. But you know what? <clears throat> the fun keeps going on because, Drew, we have our beautiful caller still. Yes, we do. And we're going to end the show with a little stinky pinky. Oh, you know good. why? Right on. Because I've already played today. How? Oh, with I went uh, on to uh, Bruce Buffer's radio show. You taught and him? TJ, no, TJ, the producer, big Loveline fan. Oh. And he kept, he kept pimping, I got a surprise for you, end the show, surprise for you, end of the show. And I'm kind of getting worried because, like, we've been talking MMA and I've been uh. kind of mouthy. And I'm like, is the surprise going to be like, and here's Donald Cowboy Cerrone to kick your face off or yeah. something, you know? And uh, he just starts playing the the stinky pinky theme. Uh, and I'm like, well, now nah, here we go. That's it's nice. on. Were they good? Well, Bruce and I got all five. Wow. I mean, yeah, but like teaming up together. Nice. Like, yeah. Uh, so you may be replaced all right. as the partner. Okay. Because, um, you know, Anderson and Rune, they never get any. They I get zero percent. Well, Rune's pretty good. No, they can get none. We always win. And it's on, bitches. We're going to destroy you. 1 800 L O V E 191 is the number. Hello, Laura. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Basically, my boyfriend has a bad habit of giving me a lot of empty promises. And although I've addressed it to him before and the feelings that follow after when like he give, does, name, give us an example of one of these promises. Um, okay, promises, um, promises. So my birthday's coming up, and he didn't really know what to get me. So I told him, well, you know, why don't we just spend a day in L.A., go, you know, and just walk around. And, yeah, we'll do birthday shopping. But I mostly just wanted to spend a day with him, spend time with him. And um, then, you know, I figured, oh, well, then we'll go to my grandma's after because she lives out there and have dinner. Well, um, what happened was the next, when the day came for what happened our was? day date. Excuse me? Nothing. See what happened was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, what really happened that day, um, when the day came for our day date, instead of going to L.A., he picked me up and just kind of, uh, like, assumed, oh, well, you know, we're just going to go to my house and watch TV. Ooh. Even though just the day before he said, oh, yeah, we're going to go to L.A., we're going to do this, we're going to do that, you know, and then we'll go to your grandma's and have dinner. Grandma! But it was, <laughs> but it was like he kind of dropped everything before that and just left them, like, I guess what he weighed would be more important, which is having dinner at my grandmother's, which it is important, but I was mostly looking forward, of course, obviously, to spend Spending much more quality time with him. How, like, how could he be so sort of doltish? How he's could a dick. He, yeah, how could he be that bad? Um, well, it, it happens a lot. I, 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 I believe, Laura, mm -hmm. I don't think that sounds that out of the ordinary for a guy who just doesn't understand mm -hmm, but, people's feelings. It's, it's like being in a relationship, he thinks that it's mm -hmm. just kind of what he wants goes. And I bet you anything he's a map. I'll bet you anything, Dr. Drew. Could be. What I call a map, Laura, is a young, uh, uh, what I call a Mexican-American prince. And <laughs> it is the guy who, it's not a cholo by any means. It's the guy who, he's probably pretty good looking. And he, his mother has been telling him that everything he does is beautiful since the day he was born. And she mm -hmm. cooks every meal for him and caters to him in every way. And he wears shiny shirts when he goes out to the clubs to go to his uh, bootleg ass clubs locally. And has nice slick back hair. Is he? No, actually, complete opposite of wow. that. Wow, <laughs> I'm totally off then. Right. What is he like? Uh, well, that's and it's not really the Does he like problem fish? of it is um, actually when I address my feelings of it and I let him know, like you know, that really sucked that this happened and I'm feeling disappointed. The real problem is is that he will be quick to go straight into defense mode and just almost really begin to fight with me. It's like he just automatically just starts fighting with me. Does he have does he have like some sort of disability like Asperger? No, 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 like Unless Asperger's where disability he... is just like quick to anger, but No, no, or he doesn't really understand other people's feelings or agency like like an Asperger's type yes. picture. Yes. Like he doesn't That's a he... disability. Oh. That, oh. that could just... be a disorder. Oh, I I don't I don't want to say he has a disorder because I don't think it's to that extent. Dan, it's it just, sounds like it is. How really? big is his penis? Huh? How big is his penis? Um, very satisfying. Well, no, because <laughs> I found Drew from my personal exploration. Where and, are you going with research. this? No, that mm -hmm. people who have certain mental afflictions have giant hogs. <laughs> I'm serious. He, yeah. Well, he kind of does. So, goes with that, I guess. But it just. You know, I just don't really, I kind of feel like I'm, I keep getting thrown into, like, I get stuck between a rock and a hard place, and he just kind of puts me in a losing battle, because although I try to stay as calm and, like, and keep my cool and be as rational as I can about it, he's just very quick to, you know, just, as I said, just very quick to anger, very quick to telling me, like, you know, 
I I do this all day, then I do that all day, and then you know you and you always you expect me to do this or do that, and it's, and I don't I don't have high expectations. Like I'm hold not. Hold on, wait, wait uh, Laura, hold on one second. Uh huh. Are you listening to Kill 'Em All in the background? Excuse me. Is that Metallica Kill 'Em All? No, it's not. It's Phantom Rockers. I'm sorry. Do you want me to pause it? No, I'm. I, I was just trying to piece together what you're listening to. I just no. like Laura's <laughs> talking about serious stuff in a relationship. I just hear ripping and shredding in the background. It's kind of no, nice. No, no, no. I'm so. All sorry. right. So something. Me, yeah, Phantom you, Rockers. Why you'd put up with this is really sort of the big question here. Number one. Mm-hmm. That's not a. It's not, that's like Bobby. Uh, what's her name? Anderson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, will you just go on? Okay, well, Bobby Dooley. my question is, are there better words I can say or a more effective way for me to get, like, my feelings across to him to where, you know, he would, he won't, you know, be so quick to just want to fight with me on something when I'm really not, I, I'm not even trying to start a fight, but it's just, it, it just seems like he's so quick to jump into that. And it's kind of understandable a little bit because his mom is, um, is, is quite the firecracker, and so is his sister. And so they tend to bump heads quite a lot. But, you know, he's, he knows by now that I'm really not like that. What's and, he do for a living? Um, he, works, he works for UPS. He just got promoted to supervisor. Yeah. So I understand, you know, he has all those stresses and stuff and then the long, his, his graveyard hours and whatnot. I completely get it. But it's just, when um, when I do get to see him, when we do okay, get to see him. Okay, so here, Laura, uh, Laura, don't repeat. So Sorry. so here's the deal. Uh, mm-hmm. You can, there are basically three things you can do. Mm-hmm. One is use a lot of wonderment. A lot of, uh, I wonder why, or what what could be happening? You know, a lot of like questioning, even when you know the answer. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder why you'd be so quick to fire. I wonder why you'd want me to feel this way. I wonder why, you know, use a lot of, you know, open-ended wonder. Mm-hmm. How could this be? I don't understand. Help me understand this. Mm -hmm. It's one thing. The other is to when he irrationally jumps to uh, ridiculous defensive strategies, use humor. Just like, uh, come on. This is is, ridiculous. Don't be silly. Yeah, you mean silly. Don't be silly. And thirdly, you can be very direct and very firm, Mm -hmm. which kind of sounds like what he needs. But uh, in the meantime, I would just recommend trying the Wonderman approach. Well, and, and Lord, just real quick, Dr. Drew's exactly right. And you kind of deserve the right to be pretty blunt deserve, with him. You deserve a lot better than Because it this. sounds like he's being really, uh, he's really, really, like, blatantly Listen, ignoring to, your... To the your, point we think he has a disorder. Uh, so that's how that's how unreasonable he's being. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Anderson, you got that? Mm-hmm. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Give us a call here. We're trying. We're going we're gonna to play some Stinky Pinky. Yeah. Right. So if you don't want to play, then don't get it twisted. This show ain't for you right now. Stinky Piggy Town here on Love Line. Mm -hmm. This this is Love Line.
All right, everybody. I mentioned earlier today, Mike, uh, excuse me, uh, Bruce Buffer was nice enough to invite me on his radio show, It's Time Radio, on the SureDog Radio Network. His excellent producer, TJ DeSantis, is a huge Loveline fan. So we played a little Stinky Pinky, and Mr. Buffer and I together were five for five. So I figured we'd keep the theme alive, Dr. Drew, step our game up here, and play a little Stinky Pinky. Let's do it. Um, Anderson and Rune are, like, trying to chime in. Um, you know, but they've never really gotten one right ever in the, like, thousands of times they try to play. I don't know what they're doing, but here we go. So it's a competition between beautiful, you, muscular, handsome, Mike and Drew, and uh, developmentally disabled engineer and IT guy. Here All we right. go. <clears throat> Let's go. I gotta sing. All right. No, it's time to play Stinky Pinky. It's a word game called Stinky Pinky. Everybody in the world, they love Stinky Pinky. No, it's time to play Stinky Pinky. It's a word game called Stinky Pinky. Everybody in the world, they love Stinky Pinky. I like the way you had to wind up. You had to wind up to it this time. You had to, whoop, well, I had to get back to it. I came in like in half in. rhythm. Yeah. Here we go. Hello, Nick. Hi, Convict Fruit. I'm Alan. What? Felon melon, bitch. Felon melon. Okay. Uh, hello. Oh. I forgot we had LARPer. Hello, Anonymous. Hello. Hi. Denise. Denise. Okay. Or Nicole. (laughs) What's up? Hello, Eric, the actor. What can we do for you? Go ahead. What's up, Denise? I'll play Stinky Pinky. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Small bathing suit. Teeny bikini. Right. That doesn't okay, count, that doesn't count. I get it. Right. No, we get we get the point. No, no, you Why does it count? Yeah, I you got a right. minus one for even knowing such a terrible one. It was a terrible stinky piggy. And and she was oddly yeah. creepy. Okay. Get anonymous going here. Yeah, so it's one one. Uh da 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 okay. Uh, she's on, she's good. Lindsay. No, it's good. It's ready to roll. Time. It's ready to go. She put on a hole. Hello. Anonymous. Hello. Hey there. Hello, yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, this is Gary from Maywood. Sorry about that. Hi, Gary. How are you playing, okay. too? Let's go. Hulk actor, American Bison. Oh. Hulk, it's easy. Hulk actor. Ruffalo Buffalo? There it is. Oh. We should have gotten that. He has more. You have more? That, okay. Go ahead. Thanks. No, that's all. Thanks. All right. Thanks. All right. Two to one, Anderson. and in, in fairness to Drew and I, we've never seen the Hulk movies. So it's kind of. Describe, but... describe the game again to people so they get it. Two words. Ang Lee's an artist, by the way. Ang Lee huh? directed it, and he's an artist. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him. I'm just, I know for a fact Drew and I. I'm, it's not my fault that your knowledge is limited. 1 800 L O V E 19 was the number you call. Two words that rhyme completely and give us clues that are not the words. Listen, usually we can't get enough calls because everybody wants to play goddamn Stinky Pinky. Now that we're actually taking it seriously, no one's calling. Let's play some Stinky Pinky. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> Where's God Diana? I got one. All right. X phone screener. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, that was hardcore. The last <laughs> time you did that was, that was really hardcore. Hello, who's this? That's on hold. There. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hello. Caller. Why did that come up? I Weird. hate you. Just drop it. You're Bert. You guys seen any good movies lately? I did. I saw a great movie today. What? What was it? It's called Palo Alto. Oh, the James Franco written movie. Yeah. Directed by one of the daughters of uh, Francis Gia, Ford Gia Coppola. Coppola. Yeah, it was very good. Emma Are you Roberts just saying that because they're a powerful family. Yeah. No, uh, Emma Roberts is really good, but it's really disturbing. I mean, it's a lot of di- uh, dysfunction, but that's. A, I mean, a lot of times it makes for good. Things. I saw a great one today. You're gonna love it, Mike. It's called Frank. Uh-huh. I saw a screening of it. Uh, Michael Fassbender uh-huh. stars in it. He's the lead singer of a band uh, in a band, and he wears a paper mache head through the entire thing. You don't see Michael Fassbender, I but will, it's him. I will watch that oh, paper without mache question. Head, paper mache head through the whole thing. Why? Because it's based on a real-life guy who actually did that, who had some mental disorders. Hello, Matt. Hey, how you doing? Let's play. All right, we got another name for Richard and another word for choose. Dick, Dick pick. 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 Damn it. Yeah, okay. Tutu. What's up, BH? Okay. Oh, another one. I got a couple more. I got yeah. a severe snowstorm and another name for a sorcerer. Blizzard Blizz- wizard. That's right, okay. three to two. I got We're saying it in shut, shut up, shut up, shut up, Anderson. We, we love Matt. All right, where you sit for dinner? And a short moral story. With table you. fable. Table fable. Oh my God! We're screwing you up in your <laughs> no, face. No, no, we You're got him in here. Keep going. Woo! Keep going. No, 
Good old one. In fairness, Rune actually beat you on that last one. In, in fairness to my dick, shut up. Caller. Hello, direct punch console. Go ahead. Hello. Caller. Hello? Yeah, hey. what, what's your name? My name is Bobby. Let's go. What do you call a Japanese boxer who has a father that goes poops a lot? What? Is this your comedy chunk or is this Stinky Pinky? That's Stinky Pinky. Okay. Japanese, Japanese boxer has a father that goes poop a lot. What is it? Slap happy jappy with a crap happy pappy. Oh First off, don't What's ever call not, up our yeah. show and say oh the word my. jappy. Oh my god. It's not get rid of it. <sighs> Two words that rhyme. Slap happy Two jappy with words. A crap That's happy 17 <laughs> limericks. He took a challenge. And he was <laughs> pretty good. Matt. Hello, Matt. Hey, what's going on, guys? Like Hi. Father Buffet. Father Buffet. Cafeteria. What's another word for buffet? <sighs> what is it? A priest feast. Oh, father like clergy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, buffet and is not synonymous not, for, for feast. Not at all. Not too bad? No, no it's terrible. It's, yeah, right. It's not too bad. It's you're, you, you should die. Hello, Robert. Yeah, I got a junk food company and famous comedian. Junk food company. Hostess? Bimbo. Hostess. Junk food company. Nabisco? No, that's not junk, junk food. Junk food company. Yeah, you got it. You got the first part. McDonald's McDonald? Nick Nabisco. Yeah. Halisco. Nabisco Francisco, bitches. Oh, Doesn't R rhyme. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Stop doing that. It, first off, Robert, you suck. Secondly, it was a partial rhyme. No, it's terrible. And it, I guess you get points for that, but we're still winning. Works both ways. All right. Hello, Nelson. Yeah, alrighty. So it is a southerner's name and something that goes quack. Plucked, plucky ducky. Pluck. Southerner's name? God damn it, these people. What is it? Buck Duck. Oh, yeah, that's a Buck? Is a southerner's I'm gonna name? Kick yes. oh, oh, really? God. Okay, keep if going. I could rape the phone and it would go all the way to your mouth, right, I would. Go. Hello, Juan. You ever notice that all Bucks hate black people? No. Because they're southern. God damn you, too. Here we go. Okay, do that Juan, on your go. excellent podcast, Bucks. not our show. Juan. Hello, Juan. Go. Oh, my God, Juan. Seriously. Hello? Yeah. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, dam builder. Beaver fever. Body Beaver, Beaver fever. fever. All right, that's it. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Yeah, Drew and I are taking a commanding lead. No, no, you, you Gabe, can't do Gabe, it until the question Gabe, has been Gabe, asked. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe. We had it in here, bitch. Shut up, Gabe. Yes. Go, Go ahead. Uh, Italian sports car and a Soprano star that just passed away. Lamborghini Gandolfini. That's not uh, a rhyme. That's not a rhyme. Still one. get the points. You, they do. It's it's only fair. He got it right, yeah, but people lie. suck. But we're still winning. All right. Hello, anonymous. Hey, it's Marina. Hey, Marina. Hi, Marina. What's going on? Okay, the first word is after disaster listener, and the second word is portion of meat. Oh God, Anderson got to have that. Pab slab. <laughs> yeah. Mike Carano came up with that one in here. Okay. That's oh, pretty that good. That was a little bit. We're uh, now winning. I mean, yeah. it, no, you're not. We are now winning. No, you're not. You're tied. It's 5 5. Go back and listen to the tape. We're winning. Uh, hello, Anonymous. Hi. Hi. So, my stinky pinky. Yes. Is, all right. My stinky pinky is a potato chip brand and the front man for 30 seconds to Mars. Lito Frito. What is no, it? No, it's Leto. Yeah, you, Leto. Don't get, you don't get points for that. Why not? Because his name's Jared Leto. And that doesn't rhyme with Frito. Lido Frito. Oh my goodness. God, it feels good to win. Victory oh, feels so, so yeah. it tastes sweet. No, you don't. You this definitely don't. Terrible get game. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Hello, anonymous. We should never let them play again. It should be called. It should be Dick something. We gotta else, look at time it is. Go. Lido's a dick. <sighs> sure, All right. It's good. Again, we were victors. It's great. You were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your victor is like Germany won World War Two. Let's go. Oh. Right. It's crazy. Makes me want. Nobody cares. Yeah. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Loveline. Loveline, Loveline is produced by Ann Ingold. Engineer, Engineer by Anderson Cowan. Executive producer, Norm Pattis. Loveline, Loveline, is, Loveline is a presentation of Courtside Entertainment Group. End of message. The end of a perfect evening. Something tells me the show's over.